And although she is from uh, African origin, um, and most of the Africans um, uh, race, they, they tend more to have fibroids and they get this disease a lot. It's prevalent in this uh, population. Um, and she is from, uh, she has been born in Canada and she was raised up in Canada and she's working in the healthcare system over there. And she knows a lot about uh, the surgery rooms and the medical field. I found someone is totally helpless and hopeless and completely anemic. She's throwing up all the time. She cannot eat in a proper way. And you have to give hand for people like that. And when she saw you in the clinic and she's asking you, uh, I, have been, I have been told by all the experts in my country that I have to remove my womb or I have to go for adoption or I have to take out my, uh, my womb totally, or I, 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 I have no hope. And it's very risky to have an operation. And I was the crazy person who came all the way three days traveling to your country to have a surgery with you. And I have been warned a lot from all the people that I'm coming to third world uh, country and with no technologies, with no um, big um, I'm, I can say big repetition in medicine, for example, as, a, as by her own words. And I'm, I, I came all that to you, and I would like to have a solution. And she's finding you smiling and with complete confidence, and it's the confidence from God that you're going to do the surgery. It's, got, it's, it's, it's not a magic, and it is not a huge surgery. It's a surgery which is every expert in that field of reproductive surgery. They know exactly their tools. They know that it has rules. It is not magic. It is not something impossible. It's doable and you can do it. The point is in the Western countries, they sometimes give the patient another options, which is adoption or to lose the hope of fertility as if because this is a surgery which could have a huge implication and complication and she can lose her womb in this surgery or she even can bleed a lot. She can have multiple blood transfusion, she can end up in an ICU and it could end up in dying. So for me, I think it's not magic. Every expert who's listening to my words now, he knows that it's a doable operation and there is lots of places which is very specified or specialized in doing these surgeries. It could be in private business or private practice rather than uh, in governmental, uh, governmental, could be that. But the thing is, it could be expensive in these countries. And patients now can think to travel to India and to Egypt and to South Africa and to China and to different places where they can find the same doctor who is certified from uh, the, the, the well-developed countries and he has got big experience in doing these surgeries daily. That's his job to do these surgeries daily. And uh, they could have a nice trip. I can say it could only cost you um, a, sh a pair of shoes, in a branded pair of shoes, um, to come to a country, uh, uh, a third world uh, country, uh, to do this surgery in, and to have a nice trip and to enjoy the sun, and to enjoy the nice country, and the traditional food, and to have their own surgeries and come back safely to their home. That, that the amount of money that could be spent in investigations only, and blood tests, it could be way cheaper in these countries with the same experts and with the same technology. For example, the same uh, company who is producing the endoscopic equipments that we work with is the same country in Germany and the same country in the United States. The same piece of work or same piece of harmonic equipment that we are using in our country is the same that is used in everywhere. The same surgery room and the same expertise and even could be the same nurse which you can find in your own con in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the developed countries in the United States or in America or whatever. She could be having uh, the time when she's training here in Cairo before that she is immigrated or she traveled to United States or Canada and she maybe is having her primary education here. So I think 
30 years ago, we were thinking that we have to travel to places where we can find the best equipment and the best doctors. I can say now in the globalization world, which is a world become so close and each update yearly in conferences and in guidelines in, in, in teaching and technologies is everywhere is the same. But it only could, could cost you to search well for the place you're gonna do your surgery in and to test this place by seeing different cases who has done this before. And even when you come to the hospital, even in India or in, in China or in Egypt or South Africa, whatever, you just can ask, what is this places and how it looks like and what is the equipment that I'm gonna use? For this case, I really meant to make her uh, awake through all the surgery and the surgery was only uh, epidural and uh, she was awake and she was listening to everything and she wanted to do this and I really wanted her to do this because she has to trust more and her mother was in the surgery room I really meant this and she she has to to take whatever she wants from images and she has to take whatever videos that she wants to make sure that her only daughter is in a safe hands and nothing to be hidden it's always obvious what we are doing and this is the this is the lab cell investigation before the surgery this is your surgery and you can tape it and you can videotape it and after this this is what is your prognosis and what happened after the surgery and this is your labs and x-ray and, and rays and MRIs after the surgery which is making you now complete normal woman that can have a baby and with a complete nice and safe womb after the agony that you have uh, seen for a longer time. I will also remember that for me I got a big lesson in this case which, is, which was a very straightforward lesson. Sometimes when you see a patient and it is just something for you, routine, that's a routine work. You see the patient, you smile, you say we're gonna do it because we have done cases harder than this. We removed cases where they have 18, fibro 18 kilogram fibroid. We removed masses which could be uh, 14 uh, kilogram. We removed 48 uh, fibroids from a womb of a doctor. And when, when she was n with no hope and she, got, she couldn't have any other alternative unless they remove her womb, but we managed to save it. So with the complete confidence you say, it's gonna be very easy and we're gonna do it. And the patient at this time cannot take you for serious sometimes. Because how come that everyone is telling me that? And how come they left me suffering in this agony and put me on this waiting list for years and give me all these kind of hormones and they're only offering me the best experts in my country that to remove my womb? How can I trust you? That's a question. That's a huge question. But I think I will be the, still the same person who's gonna laugh and say, we're gonna do it. And I think each expert of my friends worldwide who can do more even tricky surgeries, they know exactly the same, the same words or they will have the same attitude, we're gonna do it. But the problem is the patient, they cannot find the place or they can sometimes mislead it that this is their only option. The beauty of medicine, in my opinion, and from all the professors I learned it from, worldwide and even in my country. It would be always one thing. Medicine is something or an art of knowing your limits and guidelines and knowing what is impossible and what's doable. Things could be things which are very hard but still doable and you have to challenge your capabilities and you have to work every day to get experience every day about these kind of surgeries that everyone saying about it is impossible but you are still the one who can do it and it will be always first opinion second opinion third opinion and for my sake ask for fourth opinion ask for fourth opinion because you could have lots of opinions and at the end of the line and the end of the day you have to ask god to help you to the path i believe that each one in this world has his own cure in an area that he never knows where it is. 
all of us are sick people. Some of us who have got diseases that some people told them they have no cure. I believe medicine is medicine and he said his words in some of the diseases which has no cure. But some of the things he said about it that it's hard but it's doable and you still can do it. But it's a matter of the risk that you're gonna take and how much that you're gonna trust in yourself and trust in the doctors that you are going to work with. It's this very tricky uh, field, medicine will be always that and even surgery will be trickier and will be harder always to take uh, decisions regarding surgery. Surgery could be a thing that changes completely your life even to worse or even to a very good life where you can live healthier and healthier. My, my conclusion, my advice for all the women like me who suffered from fibroids, who are suffering from fibroids, I got healthier and it's your chance to get healthier. Um, the women that have, to have been told that they don't have any hope of seeing their children, the women that are in pain, the women that drop their work, the women that cannot continue their life because they were told, it's okay, you can live with fibroids. No, you actually have an option to come. You actually have an option to get rid of this. You actually have an option to see your children, to get healthier. You don't have to live on medications all the time. You don't have to live on hormones all the time. Yes, the idea is scary to go to a less technology country, a country is very hard to come from Canada, from UK, from America, from a country that everything is up to date, health-wise, everything-wise. But no, everything is the same here. Don't be scared. Surgery room is the same, equipment is the same, doctors are certified from outside, they are the same. They have two hands and the doctors overseas have two hands too. So, Allah. and thank you so much Dr. Wael Benna. I honestly, I'm sorry for not trusting you until the operation time. Sorry to start trusting you after the operation plan and it's no, it's too late now that you operated on me. I trust you 100% on everything and I'm telling all the women out there, he's not a killer. He's not a bad doctor. He's a busy doctor, but he's not a bad doctor. He's amazing. And my final words are to my family doctor. Like I told you, I'm coming a picture with a picture. Uh, I'm coming with a picture with the killer as well as I'm coming with my fibers and bringing my fibers as a souvenir to give it to you.